Now back to Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. And welcome back to Inside West Virginia Politics. Let's continue our discussion of the first district congressional race. Republican Congressman David McKinley joins us from uh, Channel 7 WTRF in Wheeling. Congressman, let's pick up where we left off. We were talking about the opioid crisis. Let's talk about health care in general. Should you go back to Congress, what would you like to see done with the health care in this country? And does there need to be another attempt to repeal Obamacare? Well, the repeat, the Obamacare is the law of the land. What we have to do is work with it now, uh, try to modify it. I, I, uh, the biggest issue we found with the, was the prescription drugs. Prescription drugs are too expensive. So we've been focusing on that. We've had hearings about this. How do we get down, drive down the price of prescription drugs? And one of, one of the ways is, is uh, uh, with the generic drugs, being able to get our generic drugs to market faster. So we got the Fast Generic Act that is getting quite a bit of support in Washington. We'll have to reintroduce the bill again, but we built a coalition of support to be able to, so generic drugs can replace the, the uh, name brands that some of the others, and we know that's going to drive down because the biggest expense in healthcare is prescription drugs. We know that, so let's, let's address those issues with that. Well, also we have a problem with critical access to or, or critical access hospitals that they're closing all across America. We have 19 critical access hospitals in West Virginia, so one third of the hospitals in West Virginia are critical access. Those are small hospitals in rural areas that those communities depend on that for their health care. We've got to make sure that they're sustained and, and but coupled with that is also so is the Medicaid expansion that a lot of people misrepresent what was done in, in the in the potential overturn of Obamacare. We made sure that the language was in the bill, that pre-existing conditions was going to stay in the bill, and it also that we would be able to take care of our uh, folks that, that need our need health care through the Medicaid. So the Medicaid expansion was going to continue, and we were also going to be able to get prescription drugs at a lower price. So we're focusing on health care in a, in a large scale project in, 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 the, in Congress. Let's talk about the economy overall. I know you're a proponent of the uh, Trump tax cuts, which were approved by Congress. A lot of people think they're doing good things for our economy. But the tax cuts for lower to middle income people were only for five years and then they sunset. Do those need to be permanently extended? Yes, they do. And we tried to do that. We passed the bill out of the House. We'll see what happens in the Senate. But we're trying to get that so that it's made permanent. But there was a, a, a reason for it. It's a detail a down in the weeds of, of how to get uh, through reconciliation. We weren't able to do that. But now it's a, it's a responsibility of Congress to make them permanent because we're seeing the advantages and what's happened as a result of this. The economy is booming across the country, but especially on Saturday when I talked with the governor and, and Trump uh, before the rally, they were talking about the impact of, of $120 million excess revenues coming to West Virginia right now. Unemployment is as low as it's been in over 10 years. People, are, the, things are coming back. We look at businesses that are being acquired and expansion that's taking place, all because of the tax credit. But that $120 million, that's all accredited back to personal income tax. More people are working in West Virginia. They're getting paid more money than they are. Do we still have poverty? Yes, unfortunately. But it's going to be a, a progress. More people working, you're going to have, you're going to erode and lower that poverty rate that we have in West Virginia. But we got to get them jobs first. And I think this tax bill has provided that, and we're seeing some of the advantages that has taken place now. We're down to our final minute, Congressman. What about the oil and gas industry? Is there any legislation needed in Washington to to help grow that sector of our economy here in West Virginia. Oh, yeah, absolutely. What we're trying to do is, is a long-term project. We've been talking with companies all across, from Kuwait to China to American industries to invest in what's called the ethane storage hub, where we, have, we keep the ethane here. Instead of shipping it down to the Gulf Coast, why don't we keep it here in West Virginia in the Ohio Valley uh, between Ohio, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia? We've got more natural gas now than Saudi Arabia and certainly more than Russia has. So what we want to do is, is find way to use that product here instead of shipping it out for processing do it here so we have other economic we're trying to diversify our economy 
all across. If we diversify it so people don't have to necessarily work in the gas industry or the chemical industry, there are some other industries that could come as a result of this. So diversification is high on our list, and I think you're going to see from the oil and gas, if we can get this legislation adopted, so that, and I know that Rick Perry with the Department right. of Energy is 100% behind it, we're going to get this thing done. All right, Congressman David McKinley, Republican of the 1st District, best wishes on Election Day. We're going to